Welcome back to Masters Live. It's day two here in Scottsdale and we're interviewing our first guest of the day. We are interviewing Matt Bromley, who is the VP of Product Strategy and Technology and one of our standout partner voices at this year's conference. He has some exciting news that he wants to share with you all. But before we continue the interview, let's check in with Grace to see who she'll be talking to next. Hi guys, hi everyone. So I'll actually be roaming the floor and looking for new demos and new people to talk to. So if you do have any questions, or if you had a question about Chris Higgins and his atomic clocks, please leave it in the chat. Back to you guys. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Grace. Well, Matt, welcome to Masters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So let's dive right into it. I have an understanding that Siemens has a long history with EDA, or electronic design automation. But this particular collaboration with Microchip feels targeted. What makes it unique and why is it important for microchip customers? Yeah, let me start just by giving a little bit of background around Siemens. A lot of people when they hear Siemens think of gas turbines and streetcars. Yet Siemens is actually one of the world's largest software companies to help in product development. Right. Uh, we have a set of products that help in mechanical design, mechanical simulation, um, product lifecycle management, chip design and printed circuit board design. And so very often we like to say chip to city because we can help design all the way from the chip right through into the city. Nice. <clears throat> For us this is a really, really important relationship. And that's really because we're seeing a little bit of a change in how your, your clients operate. And, and that's really about how can we help them create their solutions faster. And, uh, uh, and, and higher quality and, and shorter time to market. And really what we're looking at is how your clients operate and how that's changed over time to the point where they no longer look at microchip as just being a component provider, but really as a solution provider. And the knowledge you have of how your clients operate and what they're trying to achieve has been really, really valuable to Siemens in helping us understand how to work with your clients and really provide a very seamless solution from them coming and understanding what you can offer all the way through to designing the circuit board that the chips are going to go on through to production. And we like to say we're trying to provide and help provide an environment that goes all the way from design through production, engaged design and manufacture. Got you. That makes a lot of sense. We've also heard a lot about ParkQuest as a client enablement program and so what is it and how does it help customers go from component discovery to design? Great question, Ulysses. So let me talk a little bit about ParkQuest. ParkQuest is sort of the core when we talk about client enablement. Um, and really it allows you to do a lot of things. As you said, it's really great for component discovery. Um, and once you've discovered a component, you want to be able to work out whether or not it's the right component. Is it going to fit the parameters of the design I'm looking for? Is it going to work in this particular design context? And so one of the key areas that ParkWest provides is the ability to simulate very early in the design cycle. And by that, we can, we can simulate portions of microchip reference designs directly in the microchip environment. And so you're not leaving the microchip environment. Your clients are in this sort of environment that they feel comfortable with and they can see part of a reference design, maybe for a pulse oximeter or something like that, and they can actually simulate that directly on the website. That's the sort of um, engagement we're trying to get with the uh, uh, client enablement that we're looking for, but after that, we can take the results of that directly into the design environment. And that's where the engineer can then design the schematic and finish the schematic off and start building the, um, the layout capabilities as well. And that's all built on a layer of collaboration where you can share this information with your colleagues, you can view the schematic, you can view the PCB, you can look at the bill of materials. And so the client enablement that we're trying to work together with micro, uh, Microchip to achieve is really about being able to have this engaging experience directly inside of the Microchip website that your clients can then learn about your components, simulate your components, and then go through their design cycle. 
Thank you very much. So Matt, as I understand it, attendees at Masters are going to be receiving a complimentary one-year subscription to Expedition Standard. So first and foremost, thank you very much for that. But secondarily, how does Expedition Standard fit into this new workflow? And why is it useful for design teams that are working with microchip components? Sure, so first of all, you're absolutely right. Uh, anyone who attends uh, Microchip Masters here gets a free copy of Expedition Standard for a year. Yes. Um, encourage people to take advantage of that. Expedition Standard is really part of our scalable solution. So one of the great things about Expedition technology is whether you're a small entrepreneur working on both schematic and layout, or you're a large corporation doing complex designs, the technology scales with you, and so you don't have to learn new tools as you get more complex in your design cycles. Right. Expedition Standard is really focused on that single user who's um, maybe doing the schematic and, and layout on their own. It's really focused on helping them get up to speed very quickly in the design tool. We're really talking about how we can help them in what we would call time to productivity. You don't want to have to spend time learning how to use a tool, you just want to be in there using it to get your design done. Right. So it's got AI technology built into it to help um, increase the productivity and the learning. And as you mentioned, Clifford, what's really important in, in this context is it integrates into the client enablement environment that we've been talking about. And so traditionally when you do electronic design, you're looking at pulling a lot of assets from different locations that you need. And those could be reference designs from uh, maybe the microchip website. They could be um, schematic symbols, PCB, footprints, simulation models. And you kind of have to gather these together before you can really get going on the design side. And what we've done with Expedition Standard and the client enablement um, environment that we've created is really integrated those together so that you can go straight from this engagement inside of the microchip environment that we talked about, be comfortable with that design, and then take that directly into the design tools, expedition standard design tools, work on the schematic, work on the layout. We have a lot of additional technology to help simulate and verify if that's necessary, and then go down into manufacturing. Makes sense, yeah. thank you. That's super useful. Another um, challenge that engineers face is stitching tools together. And so how does this solution particularly reduce the friction and how does it fit into the larger ecosystem? Yeah, that's great. Uh, um, and, and I think what's really a good illustration of that is this uh, little memory game that we've designed for Masters. So everybody at Masters has one of these memory games. Uh, it's in the registration packet. And it was a really great example of what you just said in terms of reducing the friction in the overall process. And so we started off literally just with the idea that we wanted to create a memory game. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, uh, we worked with a partner, Sealus, to be able to get the initial architecture together. We said it needed to have a controller, four LEDs, a buzzer. We wanted it to work off a little button battery. And so very quickly, we were able to get the, the sort of initial design parameters together. From there, we went into the simulation part of our ecosystem, and we simulated the boost converter. Um, to make sure that we could get the maximum battery life out of this. We wanted people to be able to play the game um, as long as possible. It's rather addictive, so uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate that. We, did, we ran some simulations and that changed some of the parameters that we had so that we could optimize the design. We went straight from there into Expedition Standard so that we could work on the schematic layout and then the, uh, the, the PCB layout and the silk screens that you see here. Uh, we utilize the AI technology from Microchip to help program the, um, uh, uh, the Microchip chip on this. Um, and then we use PCB Flow, which is our um, design for manufacturing tool, to make sure that this was ready for manufacturing. Um, all of this is sort of creating this ecosystem so that we can get to a product quicker. And this was a great example of how, just within a couple of weeks, we'd gone from this initial concept idea all the way through to having a board that we could then bring to microchip. And integrated into that environment, and you mentioned, you know, kind of integrated into this broader ecosystem, is uh, integrations into supply chain information. And so you see a lot now about um, challenges in this supply chain, whether I can get components, um, even though I've designed it, if I can't actually get it for 21 weeks, it's not going to help me bring this to right. the uh, master's conference. And so 
to be able to integrate into things like the supply chain information becomes really, really critical. And we've brought all that together into this environment that allows us to create product very, very quickly. Nice, that's a pretty powerful tool. Great, thank you. All right, so looking ahead, where do you see the relationship between Siemens and Microchip evolving? And then furthermore, are there any new capabilities or innovations that are in the pipeline that engineers should be excited about? Yeah, absolutely. So this has been a fantastic relationship with Microchip. We've really valued um, both the vision that Microchip has brought to it and also the understanding that Microchip have of how its client operate and what they're looking for, and that's been really valuable to us. There's also a lot of technology that Microchip have brought into, um, uh, in, into this relationship, and there's work that Microchip is doing around some AI technology, there's work that we're doing around AI technology. And we'd like to be able to bring those together for a, a more integrated approach um, for the client, so they get more information uh, ready at their fingertips as quickly as possible. I'm sure we're all aware sometimes data sheets or reference designs can actually have thousands of pages of documentation. And so bringing those together so that um, engineers can navigate, navigate very, very quickly around them, find the information they want, and be more productive in creating the designs is where we're working together. We'd also like to um, integrate more of the software environment. And so a lot of product is really about software sitting on top of the hardware. How can we make that environment as seamless as possible so that once you've got the hardware, you can do the programming of the software as easily on top of that as well. So it really has been a fantastic relationship. We really look forward to continuing that relationship. Um, folks will hear a lot more about this as we, uh, as we go forward from this point as well. Likewise. Matt, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you both. It's been fantastic. Really enjoyed being here. It's been a great experience. All right. Let's check back in with Grace and see what demo she has found. Thanks, guys. All right, let's go walk over and see what we can find. So at our first section, we have wired networking, where we actually have a system that can sort colors through the internet. And if you have any questions, please ask any of the experts that are at their booth. Right here, we have April and Mark, who would love to answer your questions. And again, we're live. <laughs> All right. And over here, we have an agricultural demo. So this is taking in the soil water content, the temperature, and the pH measurement to make sure the grass is growing as strong as it can. Let's keep going. Let's see. We have heart monitors. <laughs> and again, if you have any comments, just leave them in the, or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. This is one of my favorites. So this is actually a little small greenhouse. And right next to it, we have a mini bar that actually can tell how many beverages have been taken out and how many snacks. How cool is that? And then we have the microchip store. So if you want any microchip merch, come by and say hello to the team. Let's see if we can find an expert in safety and security. Hi, Brad. Hi, Grace. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? Good. OK, so what do you do at Microchip? I am a security products uh, marketer at, for the security products group at Microchip. And I work on a lot of different content and help build their demos. That's really cool. So what type of demos do you have here today? So our demos here are focused on meeting certain standards to achieve compliance. First, we have our post-quantum cryptography demo, where we are able to show different key sizes. We're able to show that we're using the new LMDSA and LMChem uh, algorithms that are part of the CNSA 2.0 algorithm suite. We also have our trust manager demo here, where we show how we are able to do in-field provisioning. In-field provisioning is the groundwork for firmware over-the-air updates. And this is a key requirement of the Cyber Resilience Act. And then finally, we have our MaxSec demo where we do a fault injection and we're able to turn on the MaxSec um, protection and uh, reject those fault injections um, into the system. So this is a good way to protect, a new standard for protecting automotive systems. That's really cool. So you mentioned standards. What about compliance? What does Microchip do to help people to make sure they're 
products are compliant. So to make your products compliant, we help you enhance your security to meet specific requirements given to us by governing bodies. But what this does further for manufacturers is uh, prevent financial penalties and as well as uh, product recalls. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brett. Yeah, let's great. keep. Let's see what else we can find. And at any section, there will be experts that you can ask technical questions, or if you have a question for us, just drop it in the comments. You can also test drive race cars. We have a simulator. All right, let's keep going. All right, last but not least, we have programmable logic. We actually have a car door that uses facial recognition to, op to unlock it. How cool is that? Let's see what's behind the scenes. It's crazy that all of that technology is just on one board. All right, thank you for exploring with me. Stay tuned for our 3 p.m. and I'll see if I can find some more demos. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Back to you guys. All right, thanks Grace for showing us those demos. Up next, we'll be sitting down with Patrick Marcus from Marcus Engineering, a longtime master's attendee and one of the sharpest minds we've met. And then tonight, don't miss the Innovation Night Showcase with partner booths, demos, and of course, the world famous beer boat races. Plus, another big moment, Rich Simonsick, Microchip COO, takes the stage for tonight's keynote. All right, so grab lunch, recharge your brain, and keep those comments coming. Let us know what you want to see while we're live. All righty. This is Masters Live. We'll see you back here soon.